Hello everybody and welcome to my studio. My name is Lana Lamb and I want to say thank you for stopping by. Today has been just a wild day here in Missouri. We have had hail like I've never seen hail before. Big hail that lasted a long time and uh, it was crazy and now they're saying we're expecting another round so I'm trying to get this video done before the hail hits again because I don't know if I'm going to lose power. So uh, my hair kind of goes with the weather. Wild and crazy day, I'm telling you. It is wild. So today I just want to talk to you a little bit about a project that I did. It's going to be a free one for you um, because in this, uh, while we're going through all of this staying in home and now we're starting to get out a little bit and we're still a little bit nervous and unsure of how things are going to go. I just want us to think of other people um, and do something for someone else. So I've created a packet. Let me switch over and show you what we're going to do. And it's this uh, packet right here. It says we will rise by lifting others. And I'm going to make this one a free one on my website so that you can just go and download the PDF file for this and paint your heart away. Um, but I think it's always nice to make something for someone else and uh, give it to them and say you're thinking of them and hope that they aren't struggling. And we do really rise by lifting others. So if we keep that in mind in all of the circumstances that we're going through instead of feeling sorry for me and what I don't have and what I wish I had and where I wish I could go and all those things, if we concentrate on trying to do something for someone else, I think it helps us to get out of that uh, mindset or that place of worry and fear and or anger and resentment, whatever you are feeling over this whole situation with the COVID-19. So this design is one that I've designed for all of you that you can um, just, it's my way of saying I'm thinking of you and I want to try and lift you up in some way. So the packet when you download it, it comes with um, the, the main cover page here that has the picture. I can't even turn the pages. Um, then you've got your page that has all of the product, everything you'll need to paint it. And then we go right into all of the instructions. And I have this verse, we rise by lifting others. That's the one that I put on my jar, but I did add some other, and you've got your step-by-step -step, uh, photo showing you how to paint it. And then another large full color photo of it. Line drawing for the a normal size and then I put a smaller line drawing in here if you wanted to, to paint a card up for someone. But then I also added these other uh, uplifting words that you can add. Um, live the life you love, live in the moment, just breathe. Sometimes we forget to just breathe. Inspire others, hope is the heartbeat of the soul. So uh, I have added all those other little sayings in there that you could put on your jar um, if you want to and, um, you know, give it, paint something up and do it for someone else. Sometimes if we pick up a paintbrush and we're going to do something for someone else, it motivates us to get out of our own way and um, by thinking and doing something for someone else if you can't physically get out and do something for someone else maybe you could just paint them something especially for someone who is you know older or homebound or alone or really sick or something you can just send something to them that says I am really thinking of you and hope you are doing well we want to rise each other up so that we can get in a place where we're not dwelling on fear and anger and loneliness. So this is my gift to you 
and I hope that you will head over to my website lanalam.com and download this free um, PDF for you. The surface is a surface on my website. It's the um, heart cutting board I think is what it's called and but you can paint it on any surface and like I said I put the smaller uh, line drawing in there so you could put it on a card and send someone a card just a note of encouragement and um, you know I, I think about all of you all the time all the people who watch my YouTube videos who come to my classes my online classes who you know buy my product I just am so blessed by you and I just love giving back to you so this is my my uh, gift to you and I hope that you will enjoy it so we are gonna turn around to my paint table right over here and we're gonna start painting this really nice bouquet I have titled it bouquet of wild roses so let's get to it everybody Is white with black streaks. Oops. I'm base coating the flowers in with light buttermilk. That's a petal on that flower. A little bud there, and then we have a bud here, a much bigger one here. So those are our flowers. One coat of black butter. We'll definitely be adding a second coat here. For the leaves, we're going to base them in with Use some Hauser light green here. Those are light green right here. I'm 
I'm repainting the stems and the calyx a different color. Alright, now we're just working on the leaves. I think I only did a couple of turn leaves because I didn't want this painting to take a super long time to do. Got a leaf here. Okay, so those are the coat on our leaves for the stems. favorite color which is leaf green I'm switch over to a round brush here And now I'm going to go ahead and do my stems. I don't want them to be ginormously fat. So I'm going to let the brush kind of follow that line. But we want them to be substantial enough to hold our flowers. This one will need to be just a tad fatter. It's got a little bit of a bigger flower on it. Okay, then we got this one here. down here. Then one comes out of this one. There's the center, so it's probably going to cross about here. This one coming from here. It's coming right about here. Okay, so I think we got all the stems where they need to be. with leaf green. So now we can come in and add our second coats on everything. So we'll start with our light buttermilk. Get some of that moisture out of my brush.
I'll just come back in and transfer on any lines that I need. Base coating is the most time consuming and it's the part that you want to get through the fastest because you want to get on to the pretty detailed stuff. But let's take our time. And get some nice smooth coats on here. really want thick globby paint here because that takes a little longer to dry and we want this to to dry quickly so we can move on to doing the pretty painting But over here. Okay. Second coats for our leaves. Our house are light green. These leaves have, for these kind of flowers, have um, kind of spiky edges like rose leaves would have, but uh, I'm not going to be doing that kind of detail to these. Um, I'm just going to make them some soft edged leaves. little second coat here on my stems and I might fatten some of them up and I think with my second coat I'm going to do an equal mix of the two greens I 
mustard green and leaf green equal mix See, I curved, curved this one around right through here. Hmm. I have two, two of them following the same. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I missed painting one in here. This one. Okay, I want to erase. Uh, let me paint the uh, calyxes on this one. That's an equal mix. I'm going to paint this bottom here, maybe green. I think I missed a leaf over here. It looks like I missed this one right here. So we're not going to do the, the stems that connect the leaves until we paint the leaves in. But down here I want to erase any lines that I didn't cover up. I don't need extra lines coming down here. Brush your eraser shavings away from your paint. You'll be sad if you get it in your paint. Then you'll have little chunkies in your painting. Okay, some of these leaves, I'm going to go ahead and erase any lines that I didn't paint over, which won't be too many. But any that I can erase, it's always good to get them out of the way. And you're not constantly working that much harder to get them covered up. as well as on the flowers if you have any. Any places on your flowers that you didn't quite cover up with paint, now's a good time to get those off. come off it has paint on it so don't keep trying to erase it because it is not going anywhere I always try to just paint up to those lines so I can erase them but that doesn't mean that I always do. Okay. That's going to be good enough right there. Okay, so now I want to get my lines back in here for my flowers. 
So I'm going to use uh, one of my chalk pencils and I'm going to use it in pink. I'm going to pull my pattern over here because I don't, you can put your pattern back on. That is perfectly fine. That one has a dip in it. This one has a point. Okay, so now I can see. I can see where all my petals are on that particular flower. Okay, this one down here has this one that comes across the front. This one has a curved edge on it. It comes across here. This one comes across here. This one here. Oh, that's the curved edge. Let me erase that to the eraser. This one has a curved edge on it. And this one comes right there. Okay. So the bud here. It looks like it's got a little turned place on that particular petal. And then it comes here. This one should have more. It should be up over that leaf. So I'll just go fill that in so it has the right shape. Okay. This one up here has a leaf that comes across here, one that comes down here. These two separate, and that's one leaf there. This is a leaf that is on the back side because here is the center. Okay. This one here has a leaf that comes across here, which has a turned edge, a much bigger turned edge than that. paint I just put on there. There we go. And it comes around here. It's a big petal. And then this one has a turned part on it. And it comes to there. And this one comes to here. And then the center is right there. And then we have this little bud. It's got two back there and two in the front. And this one should be bigger. We're not going to be able to see two in the back the way I painted it, so we'll just keep it three bud, three petals on this one. Okay, so that gives you your lines where you're going. You can draw them in with a uh, pencil, but if you do, just do it lightly. Erase it back a little bit. I did it with the with the pink one here, and you can use a, a watercolor pencil um, in a pretty pink color. Um, you could use this and draw your lines in and find your shapes. If you have a watercolor pencil, okay, if that will help you a little bit, then you can certainly do it that way. Okay, so that probably will help you a little bit more just drawing the lines on with a watercolor pencil so that you don't get too much color on there and not be happy with it. So, um, let's paint some flowers here. Okay, my paint doesn't look like it's quite shook up, so let me shake it up a little bit more. This is Poodle Skirt Pink. 
So we're just going to go with a pale pink. I'm going to see if I even like this. I'm going to put it on my first flower and see what I think for the color. So I'm just side loading for a float here. And I want this color... I, want it, I don't want it at the center. I think I want it at the outside. I want it to be at the outside edges of the rose because most of the wild roses that I looked at had the color out on the ends, not on the inside. So we're going to do that. And let me see. No, that one's folded there. So we'll go along this edge, we'll go under this turned part, and we'll come back and do that outer edge here in just a minute. softly come to the center. It's, it's going to be light in the center and we still got to add our center color in there too as well. So and I really like how light this one is. I really feel like these are just a little bit too dark. So I'm going to go and remove the paint on these. I do want it to be that soft. What softer pink? A little bit of water, a little scrubbing. That's all you gotta do. Lightly. try this again. We want super light, so very little paint. There we go, nice soft color. this is the color of pink that I am going to like either. So I think I'm going to switch my colors out. Again, I'm going to dampen all of this and take my little eraser and erase it. I can also come back in and paint back over it with light buttermilk. not doing it for me. I want just a little bit brighter pink so we're gonna go with one of my very favorite colors, Razzleberry. And Berry Cobbler is a favorite of mine too see the difference in the color here. One's more purple. I think I'll stay with the Razzle Berry one. Now we want some nice sheer color here. I 
Okay, I think I'm going to like that much better. Mop brush. Now the mop brush is going to do two things. First of all, I always use it dry. Um, it's going to soften where you ended your paint, but if you go into the paint, it's going to remove just a little bit of that paint. That's why you need to use it delicately, and you need to use it dry, and you need to clean it after every time that you use it. Extremely important. Let's do this one. Look at my line drawing. I have this one. I'm painting this one to actually be on top, but my line drawing shows it to more on the bottom. But I will just keep it there. that mop brush can help bring some of that lighter color back in. I'm going to pick up water every single time that I load my brush so I can keep a nice soft color here. Okay, that side is on top. But this side is not. I'm just going to do this outside edge because both edges of this one is actually on top. I'm not sure I painted it that way, but we are going to do our best to adjust it to become that way. And then this one has a little folded place right there. It goes behind this one and behind this one. And let's remove a little bit of that. Okay, on these outer edges out here, we want to put just a little bit of color. has a little turned place here. Remember to keep your paint soft. These are very sheer layers here. Okay, and this one out here. of this one, so I'm going to do it on this edge. And that's really crazy, super dark. Definitely want to take that down. I'll go ahead and put a little bit on this edge out here. This one has a turned place here. It's going to be mostly pink down in there. And then we can darken here. That little spot. And then just scoot a little bit along that outer edge.
Okay, we got a second one going there. Okay, let me do this little bud here real quick. And I don't want a whole lot of paint on my brush because it's so small. So we're going to do just the tips. Of those little petals right there. It's it's a pretty easy one to do. So and this one. It's got this little flipped place right there. We're gonna look a little choppy here for just a little bit. I'm just going to work on the outside, the tips of these, for right now. A flip up right there. Okay. This one up here has this petal up here. one and I think it's kind of underneath that one and this one out here and then we have this one back here going off the back side of this flower. That we won't see a whole lot of that one once we get the flower painted in. Okay, this one has a turned spot right there. Put a little bit out here on this edge of it. This one has a turned edge, and it goes underneath this one. And then I'll put a little bit out here on this edge. One more petal here. We've got to put our initial color on. Okay, 
so we got our initial color of Razzleberry. Just a light color of that. I think it will help if we go ahead and tap in our centers here because um, then we can um, figure out where we want to go with our colors. Pull more white. Well, I haven't put any white in this yet because I base coated them in with a, with a different color. So I'm just going to grab a little stippling brush. Any kind of stippling brush will do. Let's try to get one that maybe will fit the center as well. <clears throat> I'm going to get some black paint. And we're going to tap some centers in here with some black. And these big open ones. And then I'm going to kind of tilt the brush just a little bit. Now the centers of these flowers can be dark or they can be light. And I'm just going to tilt the brush so I can get just a little bit of paint in here. So we can begin creating our little center areas. bigger, a little bit looser. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to wash this brush because we won't need it again here for a little bit. Now, normally when we um, highlight something, we're highlighting on the outer edges. But in this case, we're going to be highlighting in the center. So we'll come back and retap those centers again, probably when we're done here. Um, or we can do this step that I'm getting ready to do. We can do it first, but we're going to use some white. And I'm going out here on this edge because this one is turned up. Okay, and I'm going to pull some in the center. And I'll highlight here. I don't really like that curved, curved spot on that one. I feel like my flower is not shaped. My petal is not shaped right. Let's take this a little bit. the same way about this one over here. I don't really like the shape of it. So I'm going to adjust it. And tap some of that very lightly. So some of the other ones will come back and darken, but um, I think that helps a lot. And then this one here, I should have a shaded area here. This one, these here actually will be, because it's the outside of the petals, will be a little bit... There won't be much light on them. We'll put some obviously in the center there. And then I really feel like this one needs to have some pink out here. Okay, let me go back into my white. We're going to work some highlights into this. 
opposite of what we would normally highlight, but we want to highlight this edge and tap some in the center. And let's see. That one looks like it's under, so I'm going to highlight this edge and just pity pat it in the center. This one, hmm, this edge will be light, but I think that edge will be dark. So I'm going to make this edge light on this one. And then we're just going to pat some here. Put a little bit of a highlight there. Pity pat in the center here. Okay, let's go out here to this one. I'm going to highlight that edge and then pat, pat, pat. Here, and we have to still determine a little bit better which one's on top and which one is not. And I'm not going to do that one in the back because it's behind and we can't really see it. Okay, this one here, this is on top. So a little pity pat. We're going to come back in with our black, so don't worry about getting it in the center. I think. Uh, Next time I paint these, I will definitely wait to do those centers. But this, having the center there helps me know how far to come up into the petal, so it's very helpful. And we'll do this edge right here. We're getting some lightness in there. I like that. I'm going to put a little bit in here. And on this one, I'm going to go ahead and keep some lightness at the base of those. And I think on this one here, I'm going to do that as well. I'm just going to go in with my white and pity pat. That little folded edge there. I'm not really sure I'm going to like it. I may just end up making it a petal, not making it folded because I'm not sure I'm liking it. So I'm going to take that fold out. I don't really like it. I went all the way down to my pencil mark there. And I'm going to put that pink back on there. To take some of my buttermilk and try and cover up. color down in there. Way too much paint. Too 
Do your little turned edges. Okay, we're going to come back in with our pink again so we can darken it. And then uh, our white again. And then we'll redo our black centers and finish them off. So this time I'm not going to do as much. I'm just going to darken in a few places like where it's turned. And where one is behind another one. Okay, this one here. Push it into that corner and then bring it down into those other areas. And make a big, huge, choppy mess of it. And then, of course, this needs just a little bit out here on the edge. Okay. Pick up water, pick up paint. Blend, blend, blend. Okay, and I think this one was behind that petal. So let me darken right here, and we'll add our little highlight back in right in the center. Okay, and then this one I'm going to put just a little bit out here just on the curves. And I think that this one, where am I at? This one here is under this one. I'm not sure how the pattern shows it, but this is how I'm going to make it. So we can kind of determine which petal is on top. Pick up water, pick up paint. And now these two here. Um, this one is actually the shaded edge. Or is that? Yeah, I think I'll leave it the shaded edge. And then this is the shaded edge here. And put a little bit more of this pink out on the outer edges. Remember, we're just doing very sheer layers here. One of my favorite ways to paint. I want to pull that softness down just a little bit. My brush. I think that will help when we add our highlight if we have this color down. A little bit more into the flower. That one's looking pretty nice. I'm going to continue to work on this one flower so it can kind of give you an idea of where we're going. So I want to go back in with my white and just pat some white in there. it up just a little bit but we're keeping it mostly at that center point a little bit more on the 
this one. And then I want to do my little turned edges here right at the very edge of them. This little turned edge needs to be just a tiny bit darker underneath. Right there and right there. Okay. All right, let's take a detail liner brush here. And we're going to make some inky color of our pink color. I might add a little white to it here. Not too much because I want it to stay this berry color, not. And we're going to pull some some little veins up here. Into those. Tap our black in again. Bring it loosely out past. Okay, and then we're going to put some little dots in there of some light buttermilk. I don't know if this is true wild rose, but this is my interpretation. So you feel free to do your interpretation of your wild rose. So this is uh, the light buttermilk. Come out past it. You know, because some of those little stamen, you know, come up. Wash your brush off and then get some white and we'll put a few bright white ones in here. And my black doesn't come out quite as far as I would like it to. I think that looks pretty good. So you can kind of see where we're going with our flower now. We're making just a, a beautiful open wild rose here. All right, let's continue with the rest of these flowers and they should go pretty quickly. We're going to do all of them together. So we're going to go underneath this turn and a little tiny bit on the back back there. Along by that one right there because this one's on top a little bit here remember to pull a little bit of that into the center This one on top, so I think I'll keep it that way. A little bit on the back. And that's actually going to be a light edge. Okay, so we got that one darker, except I need to do this outside edge here. Tiny, I'm seriously, tiny, minute amounts of paint here. You do not want to use a lot of paint. I'm 
pull that down into the petal a little bit. I have to put another coat on that right there so it looks right. And this is actually, I think this might be two petals. So I'm going to I'm going to make it two petals. I'm not going to get that pencil line covered up in that, but I'm just going to have to be happy with it because there's nothing you can do. Nothing at all. Okay. Let's do this little bud. I grab a dot of water every time I grab paint because that's going to help keep my paint soft. Just a little bit. Let's see which one of these is on top here. That one is on top, so we need a little bit of color here. Okay, so with this one, that edge is on top. fold there and this one is underneath because this one is on top but you can change yours around however uh, you like it definitely need more water here my paint is not moving looks pretty good so let's go do this one out here and then we can start adding our highlight back in here if you do super sheer layers here then you're going to have just the, the prettiest flower. This one back here that we're not going to see a whole lot of it once we put our little dot dot dots in there. It's going to stay pretty dark. It's not going to have any highlight on it. We're ready for our white now. So side load. We don't need tons of water for the white that we're going to be adding. Tap it in by the center and pull a little bit of it out. Go right into that black paint. It's not going to hurt anything. We've got to tap that black paint back in, but we need, we need some lightness in those centers there. And then this one here, I'm going to keep it light out here. And then the 
this one will have a little bit in here. We need to bring that center over here so this this petal can connect. He's hanging out way over there by himself, so that center needs to come over this way. Alright, let's go on over. And we'll just pat a little bit in here. Can you pat it? Try to stay off of your calyx. I'm not doing a very good job of that. I have too much water, not enough paint. one right next to that center and then which one of these is on top this one is we got to make sure we highlight that edge so we know which one is on top This turn edge here and this turn edge here. And then on this one we have to determine what's on top here. shade right there. To separate those two. I can't see any separation in them, but I'm going to finish with my white here since I just have one more flower. And this one's on top. So I'm going to give that edge a little bit. Pity pat. Okay, so we've got it figured out what uh, ones are on top. So let me go back in and shade this little spot right here real quick. Okay, let's tap our centers back in here black paint. And then this one needs to be much bigger. And there. That's looking pretty good. I think I'm probably done with this brush. A few more loose things out here. That looks good. Okay, we're going to do our little dotting. Well, first we'll do our little um, lines in the petals. So get your detail liner and your razzleberry with a tiny bit of white mixed in there. And this one will have super thin ones. And 
I don't know if this will show any up coming up the back. I'm not sure how that would, would look. I like to pull towards me because I just feel like it gives me a little bit more control. Ideally you want to do one or two, not uh, two or three, not four. Dot to the centers, grab your round brush. We're going to start with light buttermilk. Little dots. Little dots. Big dots. That's too big. Too big for me. I don't like it. I'll take it off. Almost did it again there. I better take a little paint off my brush. Okay, let's put a few white ones in there. I think those look pretty good. All right, we're ready to move on to leaves now. Let's begin by shading on our leaves with some Hauser Dark Green. I like Hauser Dark Green. It's a little bit more of a transparent color, but it has this beautiful blue tint to it that I just love. And we're not going to get too um, detailed on our leaves. We're just going to kind of keep them simple and uh, not do a ton with them. So we actually want to shade at the base and then I generally pick one side or the other to shade on. Pull some of that shading out on. I 
This one is a turned leaf, so it's going to be shaded down here, and then we'll just give it a little, a little turn, and we'll keep this color down in here, mostly, and a little bit on this edge back here. We're just going to keep it simple here, so no stressing out. I'm just doing a standard little float here, walking it up just a little bit. Keep water in your brush so you have a nice soft float. You just cannot get those soft floats without the water in your brush and blending the paint with the water because at least I can't. So however works for you getting a beautiful float, that's how I'd like for you to load your brush. I'm keeping all this mostly the dark on the left and the bottom. Remove some of that. I got way too much in there. Probably didn't even have you on camera for that one. Should have put the shading on that one on this side. But I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, so that was our first little float there. I want to add a little center vein. I just want to pull one up with the edge of the brush. We're going to darken our float. And then we're going to... Add our highlight. Then we'll be ready to move on to our stems. Okay, let's shade at the base of them again with the same color. I'm not going to switch out the colors here. I'm just going to mostly do at the bases of them. I'm not going to go up the side like I did just a second ago. Just at the base. Where it connects to the stem. That one I did 
go up the side a little bit. This one I'll go around that flower petal again because that's going to be the darkest. And then this one I will go around all the spots that I did just a minute ago so I can make sure it's dark right where the flower comes up on that. put the vein back in that one because it wasn't dark enough. I can't see it. And probably that one too. And then this one. I did backwards. Alright, let me go back in with the veins on the ones I can't see. highlight and our stems to connect them to our um, leaves here. I need to fix a, a stem here. Paint all over me now. Stuck my finger in the wrong color. Well, not that I need to stick any of my fingers in color, but that one went way into the wrong color. stem right here needs to come beside this one. That looks a little bit better. Okay. Alright, highlight on our leaves. Let's highlight. decided to use a color I've never used on leaves before. Uh, Green Lagoon. I kind of like it. I put it on this one and I kind of like it. I really want to do something different instead of the same old, same old stuff. So... We're going to highlight with this color. So far I'm liking it. It's a very soft color. I can see where it would make a beautiful wash color. Expected it to be a little bit more darker than this, but I really like the color of it. That's super pretty. I think on the next round of highlight, I'm going to add just a tiny bit of white in with it. So let me blend a little white in it to just lighten it up just a little bit. And we'll come back with a little bit of a highlight on here. So 
it's the Blue Lagoon, I think is the color of it. Green Lagoon. And white. I just pick up a little bit of each and blend it on my brush. Okay, I think those leaves look pretty good. I really like that color. That is super pretty. Okay, I think that's going to be the highlight for our leaves and let's add our stems in here. We need our detail liner. And I'm going to take my Hauser dark green and thin it down to inky consistency. And I might add a little bit of the Hauser light green in with it. Get a get a green that's about this color. Our leaves in here. So it comes back here and connects here. So it comes across here and connects here. All of these will come back and connect to that flower so we won't see them. Oops. Don't want to curve that. And this is going to come down through here and connect right here. This one is going to connect here. Let's put all three of these connecting together. And then this one connect. Okay, I don't think that I missed any. I hope not. Alright, let's work on our stems. I've decided to go with black green here on my stems. You're going to want to have just a little bit of paint, blend it with some water. We're going to pull it down from the ones that we can actually see it connecting to the rows and kind of pull it down into there. We need to shade where any kind of vein goes behind. And that is a vein there. We're going to pull this down one side or the other here in just a minute, but I want to get everything kind of divided. And then we'll probably pull it down the left side and highlight on the right. Mostly dark here behind all that. 
Okay, then we have to figure out this one comes this way. You just determine which one's on top, so I think I want that one to be the prominent stem, so I'm going to pull it down along that edge by staying up on the side of my brush. Okay, and this one here. Let's separate these. Shade on our calyx here. Okay, so this is actually the bulb that connects the flower. So I'm going to shade up above it and then a little bit on each one of these calyx. it on it and pull some of this down So this one is behind. Until it gets to here. It's probably easier if you go in with a pencil and figure out which one's on top. Because this one is behind everything. Okay, let me go down the edge of this one. Wide angle out so you can see the whole thing. here. Actually it goes behind this one. I got paint on the wrong side here. So this one comes down to here. Just do your best to separate them. This part can be a little bit tedious. Okay, we've done this one already, so we need to separate those two. I'm not really sure which is which there.
Okay, I think that I have them all shaded. Not 100% sure, but we're going to go with that. And then our highlight is going to be... Okay, just so we don't have to get another color out, we're going to go with um, Hauser Light Green and White and mix them. Equal mix. And add a little bit of highlight on our stems. And I'm just going to pull some along the edge that is the highlight edge. time really determining here. really just a jumbled mess down in here. Okay, and I want to put, uh, I really want to put some blue on here. And I don't know about this color. This is a new blue, but it might be too dark. So, I might add some, actually some yellow would be nice, but I don't have yellow on my palette. I need to change the color of the stems more from the leaves. So, this color is open water, and I'm just going to streak it down all of my. Oh, I didn't highlight that one. All of my stems. Add some blue on there. Um, <laughs> and I'm really going to have to add more color onto those leaves. So. Let me see that lagoon color, green lagoon. Okay, let's do a little bit of white in there with that open water. That's going to make it really light blue. really a jumbled mess there. Okay, um, let me finish highlighting this one. I never did highlight calyx on that one. So that was one Hauser, Hauser light green, two Hauser light green, and a white. Now 
put a little bit of that open water on there. here because I don't like the tips on those calyx. Just taking mostly the highlight color here and trying to get a nicer little tip on these. Water there. Don't have to wait too long. I feel like my stems and my everything is just the, the same color. I don't like it being the same color. So I'm going to have to introduce another color in here, and it's going to be olive green because um, everything's too one dimensional. There's no depth here. So we're going to go with some olive green. It is my favorite highlight green. And we're going to change some stuff up here on these stems. So we'll probably leave the, the open water off of it. And just put the olive green. The open water is a nice compliment so if you like it go with it Water rolling down my brush. That's what happens. Okay, that pleases me so much more.
Give another little shading on those leaves. I feel like they could be darker. I don't want to mix black green in here because I don't want to change the color of them. So I'll stay with the Hauser. And then we'll give a little highlight on the stems, I think help them out quite a bit. And I'll just do that with a detail liner and I'll probably just use some of the uh, light buttermilk. on the stems. too much. I'm not really sure where that one connects. This is a little olive green and white. Just a little tiny bit of a brighter. I just feel like everything is becoming one dimensional there. Okay, let's work on the jar. Okay, everybody, my uh, video or my, my recording did not record. I have the video part, but not the sound part. So I'm going to talk over this part of my video and hopefully it will not be too distracting for you. So on the jar, I just created a wash of white, and a wash is water, and you're, you tint the water with some white, and we want to put light layers on this jar to give the jar the look of transparency. Now before I started painting the white on, I don't know if this got on the last part of the video, but I outlined the jar, all the jar parts, with a medium gray color. I just mixed some white and some black together and made a medium gray color. 
and there at the bottom of the jar I was adding an extra little line of detail. So I'm just going to keep going in with some layers of this white wash to um, add uh, tints of this color on the jar to give the look of water and to give the look of reflections on the jar and it's um, just layer after layer and some places you will build a much brighter layer than other places. Now right here I decided I did not like that line that represented the back part of the jar. So I'm taking my white eraser and I dampened the tip of the eraser with water and then just went in and erased that gray line off of there. You can only do that if your paint has not cured and you must rub gently or you will remove every single layer of paint down to the wood. So um, you can only do this if your paint has not cured. Now I am erasing all of my graphite lines so I can continue on painting the jar. Be sure and brush your eraser shavings away from your paint palette so you don't get those in your paint. Now I'm outlining with some white where I put my gray. I'm going underneath the gray. Now as you can see here, I am going around my stems because I completely forgot that I was painting a jar. And I do this clear up until the end, which doesn't get on camera, but um, I realize at the very end that my uh, stem should be inside the jar not outside the jar so I do come back and adjust that but through this whole part of painting the jar I am painting that lip behind the stems but when you paint it paint right over those stems add your gray lines right over the stems add your white lines right over the stems and then as we come back and add our washes you will also put that right over the stem so it pushes them inside the jar not outside of the jar like I currently have them. I do figure it out I promise but it is not until the very end. So I'm just continuing on just adding a, a layer of white uh, below the jar rim here and outside the jar edge and now I'm probably going to um, add some Oh, well, I guess I decided here to go over the gray line or next to the gray line on the outside. I do eventually cover up the gray lines because they are too um, prominent. I didn't really like them after I got them in there. I don't erase them so that they're still subtly there. But as I start applying more layers of my whitewash, I go over those gray areas so it pushes them back and makes them not be so far forward. I don't want my jar to be like an outline. So I do, uh, as I add my layers of whitewash on here, I start pushing those gray lines back farther and farther. So right here I'm adding a bright little highlight on the bottom of the jar and coming up the side just a little bit. This is going to be the, the bright side of the jar so it's going to have more light hitting it so it's going to have some brighter areas. On the left side I will make that more solid and not quite so um, right now it looks outliney. Um, so as it progresses the jar will change quite a bit and we will get more transparent colors and more reflections on here. And so I'm adding, on the right I added a, a highlight, a reflective light on that jar on the right side. And so now I want to start adding some layers of uh, thin white. So be sure and add some water to your paint. Um, just some nice glazing layers over here on the left side to start giving it a little bit of opacity. We want it a little bit more opaque, just slightly opaque on the left side. We still want to see through it. It's just that the white is going to be a little bit more pronounced for um, just over there on the left and I continue along the bottom and I will create some more in the water. We'll go up and do our water line here and create a uh, prominent uh, water line so that we can definitely tell that that's water. You can give it a little bit of a, a wiggle if you want but don't make it wavy because it, it won't be wavy unless the jar is wavy and make sure you keep it fairly straight otherwise your jar will look tilted. 
so <clears throat> we want to make sure our line stays straight but can curve slightly at the edges at both outer edges on the water line to make it look like the jar is curved so it doesn't have to be perfectly straight on the outer edges so now I'm just adding more white wash along the right side and creating some brighter highlights as well as up on the lip of the jar which I still have not figured out that it needs to be in front of those <laughs> those stems I promise I figure it out I do not know what is going on in my brain right here <laughs> It just it just did not hit me till the very end oh yeah that has to be behind oh my gosh yes um, but it does work out all in the end so just continue adding some light layers on here I don't have very much paint in my brush um, it's thinned with water so I can keep it more transparent I'm brightening up the water line and then going in and adding some more bright highlights within the jar and the water and I do come back and put some highlights across those stems there that are not in the water so it can look like they are in the jar you know the finished picture is how it should look but right here is not how it should look <laughs> all those stems should be behind the glass so uh, just keep that in mind so just continue on doing your layering here and um, build up your highlights slowly and then decide where you want your brightest little highlight marks to be I'm brightening up the edge of the water and then I'm going to add some um, highlights kind of r bouncing in the water uh, so that's what these lines are some hi highlights are kind of hitting the water in the jar and kind of bouncing through it there and creating some highlights within the water and I'll add some coming down the right side of the glass um, now when I do get to the end of this um, the lettering is not in the video either so I'm going to tell you how I did it I traced the lettering onto the jar and then I used an, uh, an identipen and, and outlined all of my letters and then went back and filled it in with the identipen. You can also use a Posca fine tip paint pen to do the same thing but trying to paint the letters in with your paintbrush they're kind of smaller letters so that might be a little difficult and cause struggles but if you feel you're up to that challenge then go ahead for it but I just wanted to let you know it's not I don't know where that part of the video even ended up but it's not on there and that's how I did it just trace them on with my tracing use my tracing paper and my gray graphite trace the letters on and then used a black marker or a paint pen to fill in the letters and then I did create a little bit of a, a, a black shadow to the left of the jar on the tabletop and that's pretty much how I finished out uh, this project and um, see how the highlights are making it look like a jar as soon as those stems are behind the glass it will look exactly like it's supposed to look <laughs> 